It's the Republic Day, uh, the commemoration of the fact that India became a sovereign socialist secular democracy in 1950. And I thought I would talk about one of the important history wars, that is who would have been a better Prime Minister, uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel or Jawaharlal Nehru. So let's get on with it. <laughs> Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was a young idealist, while Sardar Vallabhai Patel was a pragmatic statesman. Nehru, an English educated elite from Kashmir, favored socialism, heavy industrialization, and government control in economic policy. And he chose secularism as the cornerstone of Indian society and political structure. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, a peasant leader from Gujarat was a firm administrator, a believing Hindu who wanted to promote its culture and tradition. And he was also a pro-market capitalist. When India got its independence, Jawaharlal Nehru was elected as the first Prime Minister of our country while Sardar Patel became the Deputy Prime Minister. The internal conflict between these two great leaders of independent India were evident in their economic policy, foreign policy, state affairs and obviously the communal or cultural aspects of the nation. On January 6, 1948, Nehru wrote to Gandhi, In the present setup, either I should go out or Sardar Patel should go out. But Sardar Patel died of a cardiac failure in 1950 and we as Indians lost out on such a great visionary leader and his inputs for the cultural, so social and economic growth and of course his unparalleled skills as an administrator and a statesman. Pandit Nehru remained the Prime Minister of our nation from 1951 till his death in 1964. And as the Prime Minister, he adopted the ideals of socialism, secularism, democracy, non-alignment and of course the scientific temper and industrial growth. He thought that through socialism and the development of heavy industry and science, we could solve the problems of poverty and inequality in this country. Instead of relying on any foreign aid or trade with any foreign powers, he instead closed up the Indian economy and decided to drive rapid economic growth through the rapid industrialization of the public sector or levied heavy tariffs on them which effectively closed down Indian market to any foreign influences and he also relied on heavy licenses in the private sector or uh, on the industries. All of this proved catastrophic for the Indian economy because it stayed in a per capita GDP growth at the rate of 1.1% from 1960 to 1979. So I have made a video on this topic where I talk about Negro's economic policies and its impact. So if you are interested, please go and check it out. I will share the link here. In May 1959, Rajendra Prasad, the then president of India, wrote this. That there is today an India to think and talk about is very largely due to Sardar Patel's statemanship and firm administration. As we already saw, uh, Nehru and Patel disagreed on almost everything. They were in constant conflicts because of that. Translation, the PM of our country would say one thing and the deputy PM would suddenly threaten to resign and vice versa. This is what happens when a uh, country has two heads and this happened in the case of Junagadh accession, the Kashmir, the Jammu and Kashmir issue and of course the annexation of Hyderabad. To briefly look at the history, when British left India, there were 565 friendly states. They had to choose between India or Pakistan after the partition. Most of those states chose either India or Pakistan 
based on their social cultural political religious communal uh, leanings and inclinations except for two first one was the maharaja of jammu and kashmir and second the nizam of hyderabad the princely state of junagadh also had a problem because there were three parts in the junagadh region two of which would want to go to pakistan but one would want to go to india all the other way around i don't know but junagadh and hyderabad were hindu majority regions ruled by a islamic ruler or a muslim ruler and when it comes to jammu and kashmir the situation was the complete opposite the ruler was a hindu but the majority was muslim so basically this was one tricky situation and in all three cases it was sardar patel's firm action and the right kind of diplomacy that won over the states to india uh, rather than nehru's brash yet indecisive take on these matters he annexed junagadh through military force and when it came to jammu and kashmir there were rogue militia Uh, going amok in inside the state colonel sam maneksha chief of army staff witness patel angrily demanding nehru to declare whether he wanted to keep kashmir or give it away you should remember that it is nehru's ancestral home nehru said of course i want kashmir and then patel said please give your orders and before he could say anything sardar patel turned to me that is the chief of army and said you have got your orders so that was the kind of administrative power that sardar pallabhai patel showed which actually secured us jammu and kashmir though not perfectly in the case of hyderabad patel took a hands off approach for some time but he could not do that any longer because there was no way nizam of hyderabad was ready to become part of india the military had to show up but nehru would not give the orders and in september 1948 nehru lashed out at patel calling him a complete communalist because he wanted to use force to Uh, annexed hyderabad to india this caused patel to have a heart palpitation that put him on oxygen well like all freedom fighters sardar patel also gave up his life for the future of this land and his greatest achievement was obviously the united india or united bharat that we have today Sardar Patel believed that India could not follow on the footsteps of the industrialized developed nations because we just did not have the resources and also we were a large country while almost all the industrialized countries at that time were small except for China Russia and USA Machine is not the complete solution to the problem of this country because millions of useless hands cannot work from the machine because the machine itself displaces men so sardar patel emphasized on small scale cottage industry at the same time he called for rapid industrialization that would generate enough resources so that our country wouldn't face serious crisis or we would have to take the help of the outside sources for acquiring resources the iron man of india headed the home state and information and broadcasting in the first cabinet until his death in 1950 so his profound economic ideas never came into fruition he was totally against socialization and nationalization of the sectors and that was for two reasons one was that there was not enough wealth in the country or we were not producing enough to even think about distribution or redistribution or anything and the second reason was that the civil servants especially the civil servants in the top tiers were not sufficient 
to take on such a huge endeavor. He was profit driven, but he wanted the people to reinvest their savings or their profit into the development of the nation, like we do in a lot of capitalist and developed countries at this time. But in 1950, Sardar Patel died, and in 1951, Nehru started the first five-year plan, which included everything that Patel stood against. So we almost never saw his economic plan into action or how wonderfully it would have transformed India. Instead, we saw decades of poverty in this land under the socialist growth of Nehru. Not to miss inequalities, that we are still not able to wipe out. He wouldn't have adopted a closed economy or an economic growth policy that relied on heavy industries. Rather, he would have focused on small-scale industries and most importantly, agriculturalist and agriculture as a driving force for development in this country. And we have to remember that more than 60% of the population were in the agricultural sector at the time. The long-standing need of Hindus for rebuilding temples at Naumandar, Somnath, Kashi and Madhura would have been much swifter and smoother. We know how he campaigned for the Somnath temple and effectively built it without any kind of communal violence which never happened again in this country in the absence, the mere absence of this great leader. Jammu and Kashmir as a place of dispute would have been non-existent because he would have adopted a much firmer and a strong administrative stand against all the forces that acted in Jammu and Kashmir for decades to come. But probably the most important difference would be that Patel would have had the support of the entire Indian population, Hindus and Muslims alike, industrialists and agriculturists alike. Such was his personality and his charisma. Unlike Nehru, who almost always sabotaged one section of the population, for the favor of the other. That is my take on Nehru versus Patel history war. And I'm very glad to share this with you on the Republic Day. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And the next video would probably be on Gandhi versus Bose. That is Mahatma. Mm. That is uh, Mohandas Karamjan. Mm. That is Mohandas Karanjan. Mm. That is Mohandas Karamjand Gandhi versus Subhash Chandra Bose. So tune in for that. Subscribe. <laughs> have a great time. Thank you. Hi guys. And here is the first book I have written. Life in a Ziploc Bag. Please check it out on Amazon or Flipkart. And it's also available for direct buying from the publisher itself. All these links are given in the description. Grab your copy now. Thank you.